the city council being February 27, 2024, 6.01 p.m. Invocation will be, given, will be given by Pastor Don Belk of the Tanglewood Church of Christ, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and the Texas Pledge by Council Member Greg Connell. Everyone wishing to join us for a moment of prayer can do so by standing up voluntarily. Pastor, you mind coming up? Pastor, you can come up here. Pastor, you can come up here on the, on the podium. That way we can hear you. Pastor, this is your church at the moment. Almighty God, we are truly thankful for this beautiful day that you've given us. We see the love that you have for us through the beauty that you have surrounded us with. We ask, Father, that, you, that we glorify you through our lives. We are mindful, Father, of, of the ones that are uh, in the council that have, you've placed there to watch over us, to govern us, uh, to do the will that you would have them do. Thank you, Father, for the for their willingness to take on the responsibilities of these things. And we ask that you continue to strengthen them, bless them in the works that they do. Father, we want to want you to guide them through this and that you watch over them and protect them and watch over their wives at this time and, uh, and their children, sorry. We ask that you continue to uh, be with them, strengthen them, give them the wisdom that they need to do what they want to do. Father, we look forward to the time when you will take us back and remove the gulf between you and us. We present this before your throne in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On honor of the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. You may be seated. Seeing we have no proclamations, presentations, or awards, any citizen wishing to make any comments can do so by filling out a card and uh, putting your uh, information on there. You have three minutes and remind the uh, council that any non-agenda item cannot be uh, responded to. Also, any member of the public may address the city council regarding any of its agenda items before or during consideration of the set consideration of the upset item. Council, I'll now ask you to review the consent agenda as presented and entertain a motion to approve, to amend, or to uh, deny the uh, consent agenda as presented. Move to approve. I have a wait, motion. Wait, wait, oh, I'm wait. sorry. Uh, is no. Okay. Yeah, we, we don't have to pull it. Okay. All right. So uh, we have a motion for approval. The consent agenda is presented by Council Member Mata. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Council yeah. Member Haney. All in favor, indicating but saying aye. Aye. All opposed, indicating but saying nay. Motion passed unanimously. We're going to move on to the regular agenda. Item uh, 9, consider awarding bid for the sale of the old fire station number 63414 Brentwood Drive. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, all of you received a packet like this. I set up there for everyone. There has been a slight change in one of them. The pharmacy going in has changed their price. So there is an amendment for a change on that. Okay, and that's so the only change we have at this time. I'm sorry? That's the only change we have at this time. And also both of them have met with planning and zoning. Now what was the change? Yeah. Their reduction in price. They were offering 400,000 one time and they've reduced it to 350,000. Okay. Oh yeah. So we have two proposals, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And they are both here if you have any questions from either one of them. Council, do we want to hear from the uh, applicants before we uh, we can bring? We've already heard from the applicants, have we not? Yes, sir. You have. Okay, I do have some questions. Uh, come up. 
So it was a recommendation to have the applicants to speak to our planning and zoning and to be a pre-development uh, pre-development meeting to be able to address any issues. What was the results of that meeting? So um, unfortunately, both of them are having, um, uh, I guess, dilemmas with their parking. Mm -hmm. And for the pharmacy, we still needed a queue to make sure that it's not going to be going into the street. Um, they were supposed to update us with new plants, um, and they didn't. Like for the uh, pharmacy, there, if they had two different designs that they provided us, one of them what would work more for them. However, they needed to make the uh, parking uh, a little bit different. So once they did that, which would be 18 feet of length, and they need a drive aisle to be 20 uh, feet of width. Um, and that's where it becomes more challenging. That doesn't mean that they can't figure out a parking situation with the, you know, with the shopping center that's there, or even with the school. We just need an agreement uh, with whoever they're going to partner up with, saying that they'll uh, support them with the additional parkings that they need. What further? Uh, what? What do? It, what? It, when you explain, go a little bit more in detail in the agreement and what that entails, as far as with the with the uh, with the owner of the uh, adjutant parking lot. Yes. Yeah, so usually we prefer if the there's an instrument number that gets recorded uh, with an uh, agreement with the adjacent property for the parking. The reason we do that is if there's a new owner coming in at any time for the where they're actually getting the additional parking it notifies that owner that there is a already established contract and it's up to them if they want to honor it and continue giving them the additional parking that they needed or it's at that time where they walk away and they will no longer give them the parking and then these um like whoever comes into this new location would not have parking at that at that time okay okay the reason why I'm asking Elizabeth coming up here because I want to be able to avoid. Uh, I, I'm cautioning council to before we, if we make a decision, whether it's tonight or another time, if I want to get into an agreement, then they can't be fulfilled for their uh, uh, obstacles. I, I like to have these these obstacles, uh, you know, get over the hump, get all this cleared up, and, and that way, you know, there's agreements in the in, in, in the adjutant parking lot because. It was a fire station, and so now we're looking for a different use. And so now, if being sold goes into the private sector, they're subject to everything they do, just like like a private. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So parking's an issue, designs issues, you know. And I want everyone that's going into this, these parties are going into this, to be fully understanding what are the requirements before they make a huge monetary expense that becomes even bigger and bigger, and then they can't meet them. Um, and this is why the pre-development. So I know that both applicants are here. Uh, let's bring, who's, who's the one that's first one? The uh, town of country. The town of country? Let's bring up the town of country. There we go. Uh, have they, the, as, as our staff communicated these things that Ms. Elizabeth has, has presented? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we were unable to present like solid plans without paying for them. And that's just not something we can do for a building that we don't own. And so, like, we were looking at $4,500 to have, like, official plans run up, and I, just, I can't justify spending that money on a building that we may or may not get. Okay. We have already reached out to Woodcrest with an offer on the parking lot, though. Okay. Okay. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you very much again. Uh, I submit the two letters. One of them is from the Harmony Science Academy to we can share the their parking lot together because it's most of is debate. Both uh, institution is uh, doing the similar activities, educational and community uh, events. The second one is uh, on the meeting the last couple days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they asked the uh, you know the whole shopping line, shopping centers layout plans layout. So I submit that one too. So they asked, uh, can you bring the whole shopping, you know, the plans, mm -hmm. the parking plans, and I submitted that one too. Who did you submit them to? To... I will say 
say that I, did, I just remember right now, I did receive his letter. Also, I'm sorry. <laughs> the reason why I'm bringing this up, because I, I spoke with Elizabeth beforehand, and she had not, she said, I hadn't received anything. This is why I'm going through this line of questioning. So I apologize. I was misinformed, and it's okay. Uh, so you do have those. I do have his letter. So what was it? What? So now if they do decide that we would just have to go, because he's not going to go and record something right now if, if the property's not his. So once we have another letter, then we can actually get it recorded with the, um, in order for it to become an instrument. And it will always be with that. It'll be on record. Mm -hmm. Are you putting it that with the uh, county clerk's office? Correct. Okay, I thought that's what it was. And then you had submitted some uh, engineering the, plans. Or the engineering plans, plans, which is drawn by the uh, shopping center owner, and it was on the Harmony Science Academy's record, and I request them, and then they grant it, and then I submit that one too. Okay, for, okay. so then for the, um, for the town and country, we have, John, we have a offer of 329784 for the uh, the offer for the uh, for the uh, the group with the town and country that's three hundred twenty nine thousand seven eighty four. Yeah, their actual offer is three hundred fifty thousand three twenty nine is after all fees. So. It's three fifty. It's yes, on sir. the top. Yes, on oh, I'm sorry. I was reading the wrong line. Yes, sir. Okay. And then the second offer is for the fifty thousand. The second offer is what? Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Yes, sir. Um, it was a, my understanding that the last time this came up, that town and country had some kind of arrangement with the uh, with the landowner, with, with the property owner for parking. Is that was that was that correct, or? Um, we are able to rent it from them. But right. We would prefer to purchase it from them. Okay. Purchase what? Additional parking. parking. Additional parking. Oh. Can you do that? They would have to parcel it out. They would have to replat it. Re it. Yes. Okay. So they would have we they so the, so basically in, in in essence they would have to have a survey, have drawings drawn up, replat it, submit it, turn it into the county clerk's office, and then uh, for a special use for a. Uh, they, and, and then incorporate it into the existing building that is for purchase, right? That's a process. Okay. All right, then. All right, thank you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Council, I'm going to divert to the council. Uh, if you want to have a discussion, we have two <laughs> offers on the table. If you're prepared so to do it tonight, or do we need to table it for more consideration? Uh, does, does the school... So I, I was really understanding. Peace Academy have the uh, all the proposed documents for the parking because are they going to need additional parking also for would, their you'd, events? You'd, you'd have to ask them. Okay. I believe it was a cross parking agreement that they could use their parking. With, with Harmony. Yes. Okay. Do you already have an agreement with Peace Academy? Yes. And, and so now you've extended it, if if you. For the uh, station six, if that were to come into your possession, yes, sir. So, so that we, we have agreement with them because the in front of the school is specifically designated for the uh, school purposes. But at the same time, since it's an open shopping center, you know, the, it's uh, they can, anybody can park down there. Mm -hmm. But uh, as Leonard states, that most of our activities comes after uh, you know the after school, so on weekends. So that won't interfere there, you know, the also. Okay. okay. I have a question. Um, is there anything that tells us um, that we have to meet state law requirements on fair market value? Yes, there is. Um, uh, local government code section 272.001 uh, basically lays out that anything that uh, the municipality sells uh, that we do have to get uh, fair market value. And, of course, that would be obtained by the appraiser. Yeah. John, what's the appraisal on what's the What's the appraisal? Uh, the appraisal was uh, 500. 500,000? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. Hmm. Hmm. That's shocking. And I disputed that. Yes, sir. So there you go. Any other questions? 
So, Councilor, are we uh, at a point that we want to make a decision, or do we need to table this for further consideration? Have a discussion. Well, it looks like that. we need to uh, give recognition to the to the code there that we need to sell a fair market. Yeah. Value. I'm ready to make a motion and. Um, for town and country, I mean, they've, they've proven here. I have to, I mean, I've been a, long, a lifelong resident and go back four generations. Um, and I know they haven't spent the money on the plans, but I think the burden should be on them to spend the money on the plans. If they are awarded the contract, that's just my opinion. I don't know how you guys feel. Um, I love the Peace Academy and what they do, um, but my vote is to make a motion for town and country. Okay, so we have a motion for town and country. Any discussion? No discussion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second. There's a second. Any discussion? I have a I, I have a point on this. Um, and we don't have staff here, so here, here here's 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 the issue with anything going in. Um, I drive that road every single day, and so we have traffic issues on Brentwood. And that is a mixed use of business and uh, residential. So. We're going to add more on that on, on that road. Um, I would like for staff to look into prohibiting left turns a uh, certain hour during the school hours. Uh, for the reason what happens is that all the traffic to flow in into the school at Harmony is from the west to the east and make a right turn. But you always have those individuals in every town that are insistent on making a left turn when there is really no purpose for a left turn. So what happens is there it's backing up on a short distance from the entrance to Harmony Elm from west to east on the western lane. And so people will jump the curb, go into <coughs> private parking to get around. I know this because I've seen it happen every single morning. Uh, so um, I would like for staff to look into that that it is a, it's a problematic because we are going from a fire station to uh, private use and it's going to increase the traffic uh, tr uh, tremendously. And so it gets bottlenecked. Um, it's not a requirement. Uh, real quick, we have a motion and a second. Are you prepared to go ahead and make the plans uh, on the outcome of the vote? Yes, if you are well, okay. So we have a motion for town and country. We have a second. All those in favor. I have a, a comment on that. If I yes, could. go ahead, sir. The other thing that does occur to me is, as both the people and both the groups I, I like and admire, um, I'm looking at the party that would have a higher sales tax for the city. And it looks like town and country would generate more sales tax for the city. Well, it's going to generate uh, property, tax, property tax and it's going to generate and sales tax, tax, which is already sales generating tax. sales yeah. tax. But... Uh, uh, you know, there's, there's, it's going to be a little, the 229 is just one, one subject, but there's going to be remediation. There's got to be a, the asbestos study remediation of the, uh, of the asbestos mm -hmm. and then the remodeling. So mm -hmm. there's, there's quite a bit of investment that's going to go into this. So, uh, any further discussion before, uh, I'm just uh, not clear on, on the parking, uh, alliance. Uh, Do I have some questions? Mr. Vasquez? Well, if I'm understanding what you said earlier or from previous discussion, so the old fire station building so is... I have a question about Ashley's office. Okay. Ashley, she does have stuff. So um, here, the parking spaces, this needs to be 24 feet, which wouldn't allow her to have with this layout. Okay. So she's going to have to remove all of this. Okay. That doesn't mean that she can't... Um, because right now she needs 18 parking spots. Okay. So she would only have this. When you have this flow of traffic going here, and cars, you know, you have lined, lined up, even these can't get out. Well, so it, <laughs> an issue. It, it, it will be an issue during uh, school hours uh, because you have that east to west and then the and, and then the bottlenecks when you can't make a left. And those coming from west to east are making a right turn to, for pickup. You know, most times they're not going to let that left make people make a left turn, and then it starts battling. This is what you were addressing while ago. It happens it, every mean single that day. They cannot modify the building yeah. to make it work. And she's still, like she said, she's still going to hire someone to work with her to be able to create something. But it looks like it's going to have to be a smaller. 
Yeah, because the parking lot to the east of the uh, of the fire station does not belong to the fire station. Correct. And the and the parking lot on the south end does not belong to the fire station. Correct. And the properties to the west, which is divided with landscape, to the north and to the south parking lot does not belong to the fire station. So there was an agreement between the city and uh, the owners where we allowed the firefighters to be able to use their parking lot for their parking. Um, but this is changing everything because it's going to a private use. So and that discussion about the current owners and then later on if there's new ownership to all that property? There has to be an agreement, an instrument in place that's filed with the uh, county clerk's office that this agreement was uh, put in place between the new owner and the existing owner and if the existing owner of the school changes hands they have to be made aware of it doesn't they, doesn't mean they have to honor they just means they have to renegotiate with the new owners if anybody changes hands on both parties okay so this is something that an instrument you're putting on file for the future with the pharmacy they said they've talked to the shopping center and they have arranged to lease some of the property but they're wanting to purchase with these second ones, they have talked to Harmony House and they've agreed to do a cross-reference parking with them to use their parking. Oh, wow. Okay. That was where the confusion was for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. And if they actually do a lease, <clears throat> I don't care if it's a dollar a year, that lease, even though you change owners, that lease is still in effect. If it's just an agreement with no money, no. But a lease will stay in effect. And this is... Uh, you're proposing a drive-through, right? Yes. Drive-through window? Yes, sir. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, uh, all those so, in favor? Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, uh, you, you, you also brought up the additional cost for, I guess, remediation, the bait, or the asbestos or whatever. Yeah, there's a... Uh, but that's going to go, that's going to be, that's going to apply to both offers, right? Regardless of who Regardless takes it, has to remediate takes the, uh, the, uh, the asbestos. So um, that type of building, the asbestos most likely will be in the glue, on the towel, on the floor. Um, that's usually where it's at. Mm -hmm. uh, so that has to be a study to be taken out. Um, and then uh, also to be able to uh, issue a permit certificate of obligation, they're going to have a new design. They're going to have to turn it in for approval to the city. Uh, go through their planning and design, go through their pre-development meetings and accept those. And then, you know, there's going to be a, there's going to be a remodel. And then they're going to have to accept the parking plan and things of that nature for flow. So, you know, there's, there's, there's some, yes, sir. And if you do, when, once you do decide to sell this, we will actually have to do it by lunch because it is a municipal business. Yes. So that's a month before we can actually yeah. even think about the closing. Yeah. yeah. And both government own, both owners have received the asbestos inspection and they are aware. Yeah. And I'm sure it's a lot it was a lot less than what our estimates were. Our our estimates were outrageous. Yeah. Isn't it usually cheaper for an individual than a city to get oh, yeah. something oh, done? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. You got a, a government calculator. Everything plus 10. Um any further discussion? We we'll beat this uh, horse to death. I think so. Okay, so we have a motion by Council Member Swan. Who did the second? Council Member uh, Haney. Haney. So all those in favor for the uh, town and country proposal for a total. Let me get back to my page. For the uh, town and country for Front a page. total of three hundred fifty thousand. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All those in favor indicating by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. Motion passes uh, five to one. All right, congratulations. Thank you. And I apologize, you know, it's just uh, council. We looked at the proposals and went with the best deal. Okay. We're going to move on to uh, our next item, item 10. We're going to consider uh, seeking approval to upfit 20 expeditions that were just purchased. Mr. Begmont. Okay. Okay, uh, once again, in the absence of Mr. Adams, this is what he talked to us about at uh, work session a couple weeks ago, I believe. But this is basically outfitting the expeditions that were bought and getting them ready to go and to be released to the PD. 
and uh, we ask your approval for this unless there's some question. Council, any questions? These are the ones coming from uh, Oklahoma. Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Colorado and New Mexico. The same guy, and that was a confusion a while back. The same guy has same guy has things in different. They're going from Colorado to Oklahoma to yeah. get up here. They've been brought back here. Transportation yeah. cost is $950. It looks like or $930. Thirty-six, six, twenty-nine, fifteen for back each, to Odessa. and then nine thirty to bring them back to Odessa. And this Phil Longford is on Tips USA contract. Okay. Council, any discussion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a, do I have a motion for approval? So I ten. I have a motion by Councilmember Rasko. Second. second. Second by uh, Councilman Connell. All in favor, indicating by saying aye. 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 All opposed, indicating by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. We're going to move on to item 11, open a public hearing to consider a request by Maverick Engineering applicant for a zone change from FD Future Development District to LI Light Industrial District, Lot 1, Block 1. Ms. Shaughnessy. Good evening. Um, so this is actually a uh, zone change uh, from the applicant is um, Maverick Engineering. And uh, this is one of the properties that was brought into city limits in 2018. Uh, so when they, they come into, into city limits, they come in as feature development. So they're in the process of also, you'll see the next case, which is an SCP. And so in order for us to be able to do that, we needed to get a zoning for it. So their zoning for this is a light industrial, which fits within the uh, environment that's there. Um, and staff is recommending approval for the zone change. This is workforce housing coming into the city? That's gonna be the next case, yes. Okay. What's this gonna be used for? This, they already have a business in there. Okay, so there's this, uh, it's just business. a zoning change? It's, it's just that it used to be outside city limits. In 2018, it came into the city limits. Um, it's one of those that we had industrial agreements with, so they brought them in. Uh, so when they came in, it came with a feature development. Mm -hmm. So now, because our next case is um, going to be with the, the housing, they need to have a zoning okay. for it. Council, any discussion on this item? Pretty straightforward. There's no discussion. This is a public, public hearing. I will open the public hearing for anyone in the public that wants to make a comment can do so by coming forward stating their full name and only for the full name. I'll open the public hearing now. This is the awkward wait as we're waiting for everybody to rush <laughs> to make a public comment. Seeing that no one is wishing to make a comment on item 11, I will close the public hearing portion of item 11 and entertain a motion for approval or amend or to deny. We have a motion. So so I have a motion by Council Member Swanner, second by Council Member Haney for approval. All those in favor indicating by saying aye. 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 All those opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. Move on to item 12, open a public hearing to consider a request by Maverick Engineering for a specific <coughs> use permit on lot one, block one. Shaughnessy. Thank you again, Mayor. So this is uh, the same property that we just approved the zoning. Uh, so they wanted to have workforce housing for their employees. So they uh, are here today requesting for the SCP um, it, as part of our requirements. We are recommending approval of the SCP uh, for um, the housing development. They will have, I believe it's nine buildings as you can kind of see it on the top. Is that all the way to the uh, upper left? Mm -hmm. Do you um, know what it's square footage on those? Uh, I will defer that later on when the applicant can come and okay. kind of give the specifics of it. I do have the floor plans for them. Uh, 
Uh, at that point but they're thinking of having the max of two people per room or one uh, they can uh, determine or when they come and talk about that they are 45 uh, rooms that they're trying to do they will have a common area which is that's that smaller building that you saw on this floor plan um, so and that's going to be more of their I guess like kitchen area where they can actually be. So one of the conditions from our conditions that we approve, it's A311 in here, um, our PNZ board did recommend for you guys to, for um, letter E, which is the occupants shall not be limited to two persons per room. At the same time, they wanted to add where no minor shall be allowed on premise at any time, since this is for workforce housing. Uh, the other difference that we are adding here is that um, we usually don't have a time frame based on our ordinance of how long um, the workforce housings can be there. But we have been putting the precedence that it was to every two years that we would come back and renewal. But because these are going to be um, permanent structures, um, we, they're asking for a 10 year um, revision of having to come back to council. However, we do have number L, what does, does allow, sorry, K, that does allow us to come at any time if we have any violations as uh, from PD to come back to council to see if we need to revoke this workforce housing. Okay. Other than that, uh, staff is in favor and support of this, and we're open for any questions. Can you uh, take the slide back to the aerial, uh, the uh, actual satellite aerial? Just leave it on that one. So that's Meadow, East Murphy. Where's the applicant at? Come on down. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ask the hard questions because these questions are gonna be hard, uh, asked of us. There we do have a lot of people in, and I've had some calls on this about not liking workforce coming into the city of Odessa because a lot of the issues we have seen. Not your fault, it's just I gotta ask the hard questions. Um, dimensions on the, uh, on your, uh, what are the dimensions here? Because you're looking at a minimum of 19 people to 18 people, if you're, if, if this is what we're seeing the layout, right? We'll talk about 45 structures. No, 45. 45 can, structures. Can I, can I clarify two. on that? Yeah. <clears throat> so this is for, uh, I'm Fabian Hinojo's uh, owner's rep for Warren Cat. So this is our intention for recruiting. It's our in, own internal, own internal workforce housing that we will offer for employment to bring in for rotational workers. Uh, it will only be one individual per room, so it's a max of 45 individuals that uh, we're looking to rotate rotate through those. So it's not it's not available for we're not going to lease it out and rent it out to the public. It's our own no, workforce I get, housing. I, I get that, but you know the thing is, is that workforce housing has its condemnation. You know mm -hmm. we we got you got to realize well, that's is number two in uh, human trafficking in the state. The state is five in the nation, so people. I'm gonna, I got a lot of. I got calls on this. The other question is this: is that we're requiring no minors be on uh, on uh, on premise? What's a minor? 15, 16, 17. State, state of Texas, 17 is an adult. Is that right, Chief? Correct. So that needs to be clarified in 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 our language. Two, the reason why I want to go back to the satellite. Where is the uh, CTE for ECSD That's going true. in? Does anybody have that answer? Where's the CTE Tracy being Tracy does with. Yes. Tracy? According to this map, where's the CTE going to be constructed? That, the, that, that next adjutant. Yeah, right to the left there. See, that next that's why I'm getting calls. Yes. So you're building a workforce right next to what's going to be a school. And so, and one of the biggest discussions we've had with between many mayors and many cities is that Corporations are not doing enough 
to police our people. And this is why we're number two in human trafficking. And so we're bringing in people from the uh, 25 states. Guys, I'm, it, I'm, I'm not pointing the finger saying that you are, I'm just asking the hard questions. You want me to ask them because we're gonna all get them. <laughs> and so I had some calls about this. And so um, that doesn't disqualify you. I'm just basically saying is I'm just asking the hard questions because uh, this gets permitted, they're gonna come calling. And so, and this is what's gonna happen is that CT is gonna go in here. We're talking two, 2,000 uh, student enrollment right next to you. Do you see where I'm getting? No, yeah, I was unaware of that. <laughs> yeah. When we first started. Yeah. So the thing is, is that uh, as a city, uh, as a mayor, I have to be responded for those. Uh, we all do. This is in Councilman Mata's uh, yeah. district. Uh, this was a concern that when, when I saw this coming up and uh, with the CTB, even though if the CT wasn't going there, it's still something that we're bringing in the city, uh, inside the city limits, they said we wouldn't. Um, and so, I, I, council, we need to have a discussion about these. These are the gentlemen that are bringing in. If you have any questions for them about, uh, you're bringing your own employees, is that correct? Correct. So this is employees that you're bringing in for your workforce. Let me ask this question. Uh, in your workforce, what would they be doing here in the area? I'm sorry? Where, what would they be doing? What's their roles? What are the, what, what are so, the, uh, what are the jobs you're creating? Uh, so uh, it's uh, technicians, mechanics working on heavy equipment for Caterpillar, uh, both at our rental site there off of Highway 20 and then uh, off of Production Street. Mm -hmm. And so for um, the growth that you know, Warren Cat's predicting, um, for us to be successful in that would be offer um, – you know, in-house workforce. Which offers you a savings from putting up in uh, hotels and things of that nature? There is, you know, when you run in the um, ROI over it, over time of putting them in hotels and, and everything else, it, it is a savings over time for. Yeah. for Are them. you still paying per diem and things of that nature, even if you provide the housing? If they're field technicians. Okay. okay. Are you a gonna... lot of these won't be going to the field, they'll be working in the shop. And okay. There. okay. Are you gonna fence this in? Are these gonna be fenced in? Um, the entire site's fenced in with security uh, that's under card access. Um, at this time, we didn't have that drawn up where we separate this from from our other on, uh, ongoing operation. So it's it's tied within our in our facility right now. But inside your fence, in. okay. You were saying that this can be uh, one person per unit, and there's four, so there's forty five units. <coughs> Correct. Okay. Captain, any other questions? Okay. Gentlemen, anything else you'd like to add? All right. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, this is a public hearing. I am going to open the public hearing now for anyone wishing to address item 12 as presented. You can do so by coming forward and stating only your full name. Everybody here had an opportunity. Don't give me a call tomorrow. I will close now the public hearing portion for item 12. Council, any final discussion? If not, I will entertain a motion for approval, amend, or deny. Let me think about this here. I'm going to give you a little more time to think about this. Or do we need to table it for further discussion? I was discussion? suggesting a table. Mm -hmm. Well, I need a mo if, if, yeah, if so that's motion. If that's a consensus of the council, I would need a motion to table and bring it back in two weeks uh, so we can mull over it. Is, um, is that agreed upon? Mm -hmm. I need a motion. Well, so y just discussion. Yeah, if we um, if we table it, what's what's going to change? What's going to change? I mean, what what can we do to uh, make it more appealing for that school next next to it? That's my concern is the school going next to <clears throat> the 2,000 students. So what it would it allow you to do is to go talk to more of your constituents. Have That's you heard from any your constituents? No. So, so one heard. thing is they're fencing this in. It's not going to be, you won't be accessible to get outside of the fence. And, and the kids won't be able to get inside. It's going to be fenced in, this whole thing. So the only way they can get in is through, like you said, through a locked gate which is table code. So that means they come in, goes to their housing, 
They don't go through the back gate or an out. So. Yes, go ahead. Just give me, uh, just state your, your full yes. name for the record. My, my name is Louis Delalier. I'm the okay. architect. I'm working with Warren Cat on this project. Uh, one thing that I don't know that was made clear in the presentation is this is an existing site that Warren owns right now, mm -hmm. and all of the kind of light gray rectangles that you see on, on the east side of the plan are existing uh, metal shops and fabrication that they are actively working there on now. Uh, Mr. Fabian can speak to how many people are on site right now and have been there with, without incident for years. Um, even if um, this doesn't happen, that business is still occurring there with those same exact people. They're just trying to give them a place to to stay. No, I get I get it. The okay. thing is, I, I just didn't know if that was the, clear. The, 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 just having the workforce and what what, what this exactly. what this area is experiencing, and then what we we haven't had that we're going to introduce is a high school right next to it, and so I guarantee you there is going to be. After Let's just say, you know, and, and I don't know where it's going to go, but let's say that it passes, and then it's there's going to be someone trumpeting the alarm. It's compatibility. And so I'm, I'm just want to give you able to. I want to ask the hard questions now, yes, sir. and uh, and so because the hard question is going to come later. Yes, um, it, it's guaranteed. It's just going to be guaranteed. You know, so it, it, it it's not pointing finger at anybody. It's just we've been down this road before, and so. Um, we're just introducing when that was, that site was approved and bought. This wasn't. I understand that this was here and there, there are men working, but you're introducing a workforce and just that word, you're going to have someone trumpet and they're going to uh, they're going to alarm a uh, caution. No. And it, it's just it's just human nature. Drama. And it, it just, no no one's being convicted here. So, but I appreciate the information. Yes, it's sir. helpful. So, council discussion, uh, which direction you want to go? I mean, there, there is no motion on the table, but I'm asking for a direction here. I would like to make a motion that would pass this. You have a motion for approval in yes, item sir. 12? I have a motion by Council Member Haney of item 12 to, uh, to approve uh, item 12 as presented. Council, do I have a second? I'll second it. I have a motion and a second for item 12 to be approved by Council Member Haney, second by Council Member Vasquez. All in favor indicating by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay, so right now it's denied. Um, Elizabeth, we'll sit in there and talk about it. Let's bring this, let's have another discussion in, and let's bring it back yeah. in a couple of weeks. Okay? Yeah. Let us know what help everyone feel more comfortable. Yeah, I would, I, I, let, let, me, let me say this. I can still discuss the other one. Okay, so let me ask this. Help us here. Have, have you notified ECSD? Uh, quite honestly, five minutes ago was the first. You, they you weren't even, they, know, they right? weren't even aware of this. So. Yeah. We had no idea about the CTE yeah. program next door. That right Until there, right now. that right there is 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 the concern because I guarantee you that the majority, the community outside of a few people that are that are that pay attention to what's going on and look at these agendas, is what called uh, uh, called me on this. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure where the CTE school was coming in. And that's what concerned me, the perception that their kids are going to be in danger. Uh, you know, and so I, I, I think they fully need to be aware. And the safeguards that you're putting in, that you have been working there, that you do have these safeguards, you do have concerns. And two, this is really important, that isn't a normal workforce housing where you're just opening it up as a hotel and that's you have correct. no idea who's coming in. You are controlling. You have the W-2s. You understand these are your employees. And basically, this is just a method for you to be able to uh, return an investment because it is expensive when you have a workforce that you're bringing in, which we are struggling with, and we do not want to discourage that. It is a method for you to be able to expand, grow, and maintain and retain your employees. And I, I completely understand that there are several people here that own business that are going through that, and we have had a lot of requests for housing on uh, their, uh, their sites uh, in this area. And so, but... This is the first time we actually have a site right next to what a high school that's going to be here, what, in a couple of years? Or two or three, three or four years. So um, if we can have that discussion, that would really help. Okay. Yes, sir. okay. And there might be also a way to... Um, Maybe to put more distance between that and the adjacent property or possibly solid fencing or screening or something like that and 
Uh, Guido don't want to cause you too much, uh, much, much cost. I think we just have this small discussion and have a little disclosure uh, to put everybody at ease because, you know, uh, we don't want to go forward and have to try to retract later on because that's just not possible. Let me ask you this, sir. Yes, sir. Um, did I hear you say or someone say that if this was going to be like a training site for uh, technicians to work on large? Yeah. Well, you, um, <coughs> this, is, uh, this is actually our rebuild center. I think this changes. You know, I got to go back to our executive team not realizing the, the image that that could be, you know, portrayed. It potentially could be. Yeah, potentially that could be right with the school next to it. Might be something we need to reconsider because, yeah. you know, we're not trying to, you know, have a just shed any type of negative light towards the company there. So, I, well, I was just it, it. It could change the mindset of what we're trying to do there. And perhaps you could get with that. ECISD and have them send out some kind of some kind of survey or something to. Uh, to the to the students to the parents and see what their what their feelings are on this um i mean if they come back mostly positive and they they, they mm -hmm. don't see a, they don't see a problem with it then i think that's on the right track no i mean it's definitely it's the the perception and, and what it is to to the mayor's to the mayor's point of the statistics so um i just just wanted to point that out that that's something i will take back tomorrow and discuss and, and see what that is because in no way do do we are we trying to even no, shed that and, negative and, light it's it's a great opportunity for us that we no were, and, and, we were and i get at. it and, and that's not exact and, and and i'm not trying to put that 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 uh, perception out there that's what you're trying to do um but the thing is is that there will be one individual that trump i oh, got the oh, call no, yes. and and the thing is is that this is a struggle that everybody every company's having and they're trying to figure out trying to get their employees out of the out, out of the hotels which is great for us a hotel multiple tax is just out of the, <laughs> it's great <laughs> But I understand, you know, for your sustainability, your profitability, and your continuity to be able to grow your company, this is an issue you have to overcome. And we want to be able to help you that we don't want to be a hindrance. But we also don't want the negativity for your company, your product, and then having a battle and where you're going to have people out there picketing and picketing in our houses saying, you know, hey, you're, you're, you're not taking care of the, or even considering the safety of our students, which is still three or four years down the line. But I'd rather have the hard questions answered now. And if we can get some kind of uh, sense of uh, what ECSD and some of those potential parents in the future are going to be, just an inkling other than just a, mm. a small, because I'm giving it to you that, that small group will grow. And, and it's going to, right after this, it's, it's going to get out. And so. Um, I, w I like to have that discussion, you, you know, just a, a small sampling it gives an idea for your benefit and ours in the communities, you know. And so Ms. Elizabeth told me, I said, you're going to hear about this. And she was right. I did hear about it. And so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm sounding the trumpet right now. Before we go forward, you guys put one penny. I know you already spent some money in the, in the designs, stuff like that. But to give, give us two weeks. Let's, let's, let's work on it. And I'll, and, I, and I'll reach out. I'll, I'll, I'll call some of uh some people at ACSD, I'll call the superintendent and let him know and see if he can get some feedback for us to help you. Is that fair enough? Fair I, enough. I still want to ask my question again. No, sir. Yes. Uh, what is it that uh, the housing of these people, you said they were technicians working on large equipment? Uh, heavy, heavy equipment, you know, bulldozers, uh, um, backhoes, skid steers. They're, they're other it's more yeah. Okay, that's, that's where I'm going with my question. You know, our career in technology education, which uh, the mayor referenced CTE, I see young people being trained to potentially be employed by you. No, yeah, that, that's... I see the positive. That's, that was, that's a... Uh, when we when I heard that as well, I mean, that's conversations that we'll have that I'll, I'll bring back to, to my executive team. Absolutely. And, and talk to them about it, but... So, um, okay. it, it, I, I think it's a simple conversation, but I just think for a little more clarity on our part, I think that ECSD needs to know. Um, I don't. If I were bad, I, uh, like I said, I think overall I don't think it's an issue, but there will be some. Oh, there will be some loud voices out there. I <laughs> guarantee it. And uh, and so and especially after today, we're, we're there's a few people in here are going to get some calls. Uh, and so we'll just go. But I just say, um, can we bring back? have a discussion and then just bring it back for a reconsideration. Is that fair enough? Okay. Uh, right now we're saying no, 
then me will say no in a couple of weeks or a month. I said, you know, are you guys under time crunch? Um, always under time crunch. We were. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, so let's uh, bring it back in a couple of weeks. Okay. Is that fair? All right. Thank you. We're going to move on to item 13, open a public hearing. Oh, my goodness, you are on today. Open a public hearing, consider request for uh, Cassandra Huggins with Dynamic Engineering Consultants PC for a specific use permit on a 1.18 uh, acre tract of land. Go ahead, Ms. Johnson. Okay, so this, this uh, applicant is uh, requesting um, a permit uh, for an automobile uh, service facility also. Um, And um, so it's one of our conditions that we always do that we have to approve the site plan. Um, in, um, we did have some requests that I'm gonna have the applicant <coughs> later on come here to discuss what they're wanting to do right now. Uh, we are in favor of this uh, SUP as long as they comply with uh, conditions one through five. Um, we, um, if they were to have any wreck vehicles on site, we would like them to be able to um, enclose them. However, this company doesn't tend to have them, but it's something that we still put on there just for uh, for our safety. So it wouldn't really apply to them. You said they but, don't intend to have them. Yes. It doesn't say we won't Exactly. Have so that's why we always put it in there just in case. Um, they will. All, they're also asking, uh, I think they're going to, uh, change their operation hours, but I'll let the applicant ask. Uh, right now we're asking from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, condition E is one that, um, or five, sorry, on here, is one that is part of our ordinance and uh, we kind of have to keep it on there. Uh, but they are requesting for some modifications. I do have some handouts for you guys. Thank You're adding this language? No, that's what the applicant is requesting to mm -hmm. be modified to, and I'll let her um, talk about it if okay. you guys are ready for that. Yeah, go ahead. Just introduce yourself uh, for the record, please. Hi, I'm Cassandra Huggins with Dynamic Engineering. Thank um, you. So I am the site civil on the project. Um, I do have Christian Brothers Automotive here as well, who will be the developer, owner, maintainer, end user. Um, so just a little bit about Christian Brothers Automotive. Um, a bulk of their work revolves around maintenance, not necessarily the mechanical work. Um, so that does include Brakes, shocks, tune-ups, diagnostics, electrical systems, AC, <laughs> alignments, and oil changes. Um, Christian Brothers did not perform any type of body work. Um, mufflers, painting, tire recapping, or those noise generating services. Um, and they do not rebuild engines or transmissions in their shops. On occasion, they will pull an engine or transmission out to swap it for a new one. Um, Christian Brothers does replace them by sending them out to a sublet. Um, or a local company, and it's usually completed within a day. Um, and that's less than 2% of their business. Um, so I did want to just let you guys know what the use actually is. It is going to be a Christian Brothers Automotive. They are a nationwide company. Um, their legal team did review item number five and requested these changes. Um, so just so for record, um, the request is 
they would like item five to be revised to review of the permit upon receiving neighborhood complaints about violations. City Council shall have the right to amend, change, or terminate the permit for violations of the terms and conditions of the permit after holding a properly noticed public hearing. Um, and that came directly from Christian Brothers Legal. They think that that's reasonable. Um, as far as two, it is pertinent for their funding. Um, so they will not, their lender will not agree to this project. Um, so if this language is not um, granted, then the project will not be moving forward. Okay. based off of financing. Um, that being said, Christian Brothers understands this is a critical point for them. Um, so if you need more time for decision making, um, they're okay with tabling. Um, to loop in the applicable parties or however council may need to proceed, they're okay with tabling. Um, and we're also here for any questions myself or Christian Brothers. Okay, uh, quick question. Uh, proximity to Ponderosa. Because I'm seeing 56th Street. 191. So this is at the Shiloh. Um, you know where the McDonald's is? Can you put back? I think they're kind of showed it on the, one of the slides. Okay, so this is on like the Fadre. other side yeah. of uh, Fadre. Yes. Yeah. So right now there's, I think you guys would be one of the first ones coming in to. Yeah, so all of the infrastructure has been installed. I was just out there. It looks great. Um, it's vacant parcels right now. Uh, pad sites to be developed. Mm -hmm. Then we have drain, uh, we're addressing the drainage issues. You know, we have drainage issues north north of them. Um, I believe they've done all their schematics for yeah. Their the, analysis. the seller of the property and his engineer were working with TechStot, and I'm aware of that. Um, we aren't completing. I know that work we're though. praying for rain, man, but I don't want that slab, you know, in the middle of 191. Elizabeth, is this uh, location just east of that McDonald's, right off of Fodre? Northeast? Yeah, it'll yes. be a little bit further. It is then, further, yeah. yeah, it's um, Lions Gate, just east of that. It's the second parcel and to the east. Um, here, I think that's a, that's a good representation. Yeah. What's the setback over there on 191 right now? Elizabeth, do you know? Is it? So because it's a commercial building, uh -huh. they technically can build to the property line. They can? Yeah. Um, Not that they're going their to. Design isn't like that. Yeah, yeah. So. if you want to switch over to our site plan, um, and we have actually prepared a pre loan grading plan aligning as well. Um, so our access is off okay. of um, 56th, and you know the the building is. If you see the accessible stalls, that'll be the front of the building. Um, so we are pretty set back. We are um, there's a a raw water line that runs through, so the building you know the easement it can encroach. Um, you know, the building cannot encroach within that easement. One point, one acre. Mm -hmm. oh, Mr. Thompson's not here to put in his two cents. Mm -hmm. um, it says it's this district. What are, you, what are your normal business hours? Um, so the business hour, the, the conditions that were on there, seven to six, those are the hours we're comfortable with. The what, only, what days? Um, Monday through... Christian Brothers is here. I'm so, yeah, I apologize. Yeah, we got the hours. But, uh, operation Monday through Saturday. Sundays, right? I think it's Sundays. Sundays the, the Lord's Day, so we're not working on Sunday, right? No. Good evening, Mayor Council. Good evening. Um, no, we're open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, we're only open on Saturday up to the first 180 days of operation. After that, we're closed on Saturday. No, no, we're not open on Sunday. Okay. Woo -hoo. <laughs> There's going to be two readings. So one of the main changes is redlining the, this is a temporary permit. And that's mostly for the funding. Yeah. Uh, no, well, there's no, it's a commercial area, so there was no notice of going out to the shallow area at all, was there? No. Yeah. It, it, it's outside the uh, it's outside that outside bubble. Mm -hmm. I know a few people are going to call. They're going to be calling Steve, but I know they're going to call. Me too. I mean, I just they, say, they, they complained about the McDonald's. They, they complained yeah. about the McDonald's. They complained about the apartment complex. Then they came about a potential dick sporting goods that this city never processed. So, they're just you have some. But they also complain that there's no development happening. 
they complain about the development. They complain that they didn't have a road. Now they have a road, and they complain about the road. You know, they think they thought that road was going to be built in two weeks. You know, and then we, two weeks later they came and complained. He says, "Man, you better prepare. You got two more years." That's right. Well, I've seen Christian Brothers Automotives in have the you? in the Metroplex, and it's not a. So it's a franchise. It, yeah, okay. it, it's not a metal building. It's it's a nice. I mean, it's a nice building with it's brick nice and brick. it's they're very. Um, very, it'll fit this area definitely. Well, you know, um, the residents complain about that U-Haul going down here on the, on the, on the Billy Hags and the Dollar General. Yeah, and so, and the uh, the aesthetics, okay. That was because they thought all them people from California were coming here. I mean, they are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Council, we have discussion on this. This is a temporary uh, um, permit, and they need this to go forward for your financing. Yes. Okay. Without the temporary permit wording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. What's your time? What's your time frame? Um, we're open to tabling it if you need to discuss it. We're well, you want to table it so Mr. Thompson can have some yeah. feedback on this? Let, 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 let's do that. Let's table it so I can have Mr. Thompson here. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is his district. Right. It's right. going to be fair. Because if anyone's going to get the calls, it's Mr. Mr. Thompson. Okay. And so it'd be unfair of us to make a decision and not being there. We already tabled one item because of that. So let's just bring it back in a couple of weeks. And the franchisee, um, he is local. Him and his wife, they're, they're local to the okay. area. Okay. So it's going to be owned and operated by them. Do we have any, uh, any, any, any type of art you can show us what, <laughs> what pretty much what the building is going to look like? Uh, I think we, they're stereotypical um, building facades. They're, yeah. they're pretty typical, so we okay. can definitely provide, provide those to Mr. Thompson as well. Yes. Um, and, you know, to the, the meeting again, the council again. Yeah, let's do that. That'd time. be helpful. Yeah. Well, I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. You're just, uh, um, you know, one, you're one for three today. I'm sorry. <laughs> as far as the language, though, because um, that is the main concern is item E, um, just because you're having to not move forward about that. Mm -hmm. um, is that something we can coordinate offline and come to agreement on or? Ultimately, it's going to be a city council decision. Yeah. Okay, understood, it's so it's be, not it's a legal decision. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, 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 we'll discuss the language and all that yeah. on, uh, on uh, in a couple of weeks. Okay, Sounds understood. Good? All right, appreciate it. So I need a motion guys. to table this item. I move to table. I a motion by Council Member Morales to table item 13 is presented. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Council Member Connell. All in favor, indicating but saying not. Aye. Aye. All opposed, indicating but saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. We are tabled on item 13, subject to be brought back in two weeks. Okay. Item uh, 14, consider donating the real property where the Odessa College downtown park has been built on Odessa College pursuant to local government code, section 272.001. Mr. Beckman. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, we rescinded the resolution where this was done improperly back in 2021, it looks like. Uh, we have worked, legal primarily has worked on an ordinance between now, then and now, and as we're doing that and doing more research, there's a couple questions that we need to answer. We've already been a couple years into this without having it done right and we want to make sure that we're doing this right, so I would ask the table, the council to table this and let me come back with some answers in two weeks to some questions that I've had uh, around this and that have been posed around this. Uh, that would be my request tonight. Council, any discussion? I think so, move to table. I have a motion by uh, Council Mayor Connell to table item uh, 14 is presented to be subject to be brought back in two weeks. Mm -hmm. yep. I have a second by Council Member Haney. All in favor, indicating by saying aye. 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 All opposed, indicating by saying nay. Motion passed unanimously. <coughs> so we're bringing back 12, 13, and 14. Yes, 12, 13, and 14 in two weeks. Move on to item 15. Consider amending chapter 2 of the City of Odessa Code of Ordinance entitled Animal Control First Approval. Mr. Jones. Mayor, City Council, I have Kelly here. Ms. Kelly, you want to come? You want to come forward? <laughs> come on down. She, there's a couple of things that uh, I think she's wanting to discuss okay. on this, and uh, so of course we can always adjust on the fly however we need to, and uh, we'll go from there. Kelly, you have the floor, man. You believe he put me up here? Yeah. So we were looking at the amendments about the four and four changing to six and six. 
the changing the four to uh, the number of animals, that's been in the city ordinance since 97. So that's nothing new, but if y'all want to change it to six, we don't have any problem. Um, as far as the alteration, we took an average sampling of why we went at four instead of six. Your cats come into season a lot of your, earlier than your dogs. So when you have a veterinarian says you shouldn't uh, neuter this animal or this dog, this dog till he's six months old, eight months old, the cats are still over here. So, but we don't have a problem with six months. If that's a consensus of the vets and what y'all want to do, that's fine with us. It just moves the bell curve. Uh, it just moves the bell curve yeah. a little bit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do we say? It's okay. Uh, the one that we looked at was the, the addition that we didn't have in there about being transferred to humane organizations and the stipulation that they had to provide us with a certification within one month of the time that they took the animal. That's pretty restrictive. And there's, um, I've got a couple of uh, rescues here that they'd like to say something about that. But I'm going to say, for rescues, they're not in the business to go out there and breed animals. Mm. They're in the business to stop it right. and right. get them out of here uh, because it's overpopulation. So that's not their line of work. Um, and there's things that, that factor in here. Uh, one of the main rescues that pulls for us, Dog Rescue R Us, uh, they pull pregnant dogs, dogs that, that that have puppies on them that are one day old. Well, you can't alter them in a month. Yeah, you you know, they may, they may pull a sick dog, a dog with Giardia, internal parasites. They may pull a dog that has heartworms, and you cannot alter an animal that has heartworms, you'll kill it. And it takes several months to get over that. So to put that one month, you have to do this, gotcha. will put us in direct violation okay. of city ordinance that you know they have to do that now if we want to leave that in there and just take that one month stipulation out yeah I think I think they can live with it so what your suggestion is to read this is section 2-4-4 disposal of impound dogs and cats animals may be transferred to human humane organizations as long as the humane organization agrees to vaccinate sterilize animal notify animal control period 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 okay you know, I, I, I feel when they apply with us as a 501c3 to be able to tag what we call tag animals, tag them from us, uh, it, they understand this is city ordinance. You have to yeah. sterilize these animals. Another thing that they run into, um, it, it, they may not be able to get that, that with a vet, get their, um, get their appointment. So it may be two, three months before they can get their appointment, but they won't send them to north, east, west, wherever, because up in those areas, it's even harder, and it's even more expensive than it is here, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, you may have a neuter on a dog costing seven, eight hundred dollars, whereas around here, it might be three hundred dollars. So yeah, I mean, the, the ones up north, they tell me, we wish we had your vets up here, but we just don't have enough vets. Nobody so does. I mean, there's various reasons. In amputees, if they if they they took one from us that had a a shoulder amputated, an arm amputated, and so that that cat's going to take a while before it can be altered. Oh, so gosh. that's all I'm asking. I think okay. that's all the rescues yeah. are asking is take that one month stipulation out of there, give them a little breathing yeah. room. Uh, I have no problem redoing everybody's application. That you understand, you have to do it within right. this time. I, I have no right. problem with that. Okay. If that's what y'all want to do. Kelly, I was playing with that just a couple minutes ago. The veterinarian certificate within one month of transfer, we could go within established time frames. Well, it That are, are deleting that portion altogether. Yeah. I, you know, the, the veterinarian certificate that usually, if they transport out of state, they have to send it by uh, state law. Mm -hmm. They yeah, have to send it with a health certificate. So they have health certificates. Yeah. If they're sent out of state, so it's already state law. So it's yeah, it's already. already. Yeah. So it's just redundant. Mm -hmm. it, is. Yeah. It, it is. It is. So and then so for us to have to sit there and, and uh, like uh, dog rescue R S pulled 70, 70, 60, 60, 70 dogs in December from mm. us. Uh, now I'm going to have to track each dog. <laughs> okay. Now most of those were already altered, and I know they were because the same vet that does our alters does their alters. Okay. So I already know that it's done. So. So the, so the consensus here is we stay with Section 1, the Odessa City Code, Chapter 2, Animal Control, Article-2-4-4. Dash, 
Article 2-3, dogs and cats uh, hereby amended as the following. Section 2-3-1 makes maximum number shall be unlawful to uh, accept or provide subsection B below and any person to keep possession or maintain alter dogs and or slash cats in total number exceeding six per premise. Council, we have a consensus on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to move on to section no. uh, do dash three dash five spray and neuter required. All unaltered dogs and cats over six months of age kept harbored and maintained with the city count, uh, city limits must be spayed, dash neuter, or their owner shall be obtained to breed breeders permit under this chapter. I thought I was going to say that the owner yeah, did yeah. neuter and spray. <laughs> I said, Dan, what are you? <laughs> Except to spray neuter requirements, animal, animals under six months. Oh, we have two dogs. We're about to sell them here after this section. Yeah. Um, section two, the Odessa. Oh, so we have consensus on section two dash three dash five? Yes, on yes. six months. Yes. Six months. Section two, the Odessa City Code, chapter two, animal control article dash two. Uh, two dash four impound and adoption section two four four disposal of impound dogs and cats hereby amended that stays disposal of impound dogs and cats uh, section uh, two uh, dash four four uh, item D animals may be transferred to a human organization as long as the human humane organization agrees to vaccinate and sterilize animal and notify animal control period period, period. we will right. be eliminated with a copy of the veterinarian certificate within one month of traffic yes. so council i need a motion for these amendments as i read them off i'll so move i have a motion by council member connell do i have a second second Se second by council member vasquez kelly any discussion we're good okay i got the thumbs up all those in favor right. indicating by saying aye. aye all those opposing getting the same eight motion passes unanimously you're very welcome man thank you thank for coming you kelly out and making those clarifications for us we're listening we're listening. We need help with this stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, where, I lost myself. Where, where are we at? 16. 16. All right, we're rolling through. Item 16, consider approving the performance agreement between the Odessa Development Corporation and a walk -up, is it Wacoming or Wachman? Wachman uh, Trading Company Incorporated. Mr. Crow. How you doing, sir? Man, wonderful, wonderful. moving up. They gave you a shirt. Yeah, I tell you, <laughs> stick around long enough. I, I think it's because they didn't like the way I was dressing, so yeah, they gave me the shirt. Man, they they have a, they have a clothing budget. Okay, I told you. So. <laughs> Maybe they just want you on the golf course more. <laughs> I want me on the golf course more, but that ain't happening. So, honorable mayor, distinguished council, thank you so much for your time tonight. For this item. Um, we're, the Odets Development Corporation is asking that you consider a resolution approving a performance agreement between the ODC and Walkman Trading Company Incorporated. Whereas Walkman Trading Company Incorporated plans to construct or cause to be constructed necessary infrastructure improvements for a proposed light industrial park consisting of the extension of Fodry Road and related sewer and water improvements from Yukon Road north to the industrial park generally located on an approximately 75.749 acre tract of land in section 40 block 41 whereas the odc board of directors has determined that the financial assistance to be provided to the developer for the qualified expenses to be made to the property is consistent with and meets the definition of project as that term is defined in sections 501.101 and 501.103 of the texas local government code and the definition of cost as, as that term is defined by section 501.152 of the Texas Local Government Code. And based on the value of those qualified expenses, Walkman has been approved for financial assistance from the Odessa Development Corporation in the amount of $6,500,000 on a reimbursement basis as provided in the performance agreement. Whereas the ODC board did uh, approve this unanimously, this item uh, and ordinance will approve this performance agreement and for the infrastructure costs related to the development of a light industrial park that's generally located north of Yukon Road near Fodry Road, we do ask for your approval of this ordinance. Council, any questions? Mr. Crow, um, $6.5 million. The agreement shall be effective. Uh, that will continue to after December 31st of 2028. And then on page, I guess it would be page four of 17. 
I'll take your word for that. Section four, uh, item eight, qualified expenditures, uh, $8.5 million by December 31st of 2028. I'm not sure on the eight, the eight point five because we're looking at a total of six point five, not to exceed. Yeah, it, it affirmative covenants and developers qualified expenditures. Developer covenant uh, agrees to submit ODC payment invoices, paid receipts, and other paid documentation form acceptable to ODC qualified expenditures made to the property of and benefit of the property in the minimum amount, eight million five hundred thousand. I believe that's probably going to be the total expense of the project. ODC will expend 6.5. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just wanted to make sure because I've seen these contracts and I yes, never sir. want to hear is how you interpret a contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's why you have a contract. Hey, I have a marriage contract <laughs> and I don't get to interpret it in any form or fashion I want to. It's <laughs> literal. Yes, sir. That's why they've kept me around for 42 years. So. Council, do we have any uh, discussion? Clarification. We have Mr. Crow up here. We can uh, interrogate him. He still got one more weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's still early. If there is no discussion, I'll entertain a motion for approval, amend or deny. So moved. I have a motion to approve item 16 as presented for the amount of 6.5 million. Enter the record. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second by Council Member Connell. All in favor, indicating by saying aye. aye. All opposing, indicating by saying nay. Motion passing now. We're going to move on to item 17, consider approving the performance between the Odessa Development Corporation and ICA Development, LLC. Mr. Crow. For this item, the Odessa Development Corporation is asking City Council to consider a resolution approving a performance agreement between the Odessa Development Corporation and ICA Development, LLC. Whereas ICA Development, LLC proposes to develop an approximate 150-acre mixed-use development on the east side of the City of Odessa, Midland County, consisting of a mixed-use development which will include industrial parks, workforce housing, commercial development, and retail development. ICA plans to construct or cause to be constructed certain necessary infrastructure improvements including utilities, roadway, and drainage improvements to the proposed development which is generally located at the southwest corner of Texas State Highway 191 and Yukon Road, City of Odessa, Midland County, Texas. As the ODC Board of Directors has determined that the financial assistance to be provided to the developer for the qualified expenses to be made to the property are consistent with the meets and definition of project as that term is defined in Section 501.101 and 501.103 of the Texas Local Government Code and the definition of cost as that term is defined by Section 501.152 of the Texas Local Government Code. And as the Odessa Development Corporation Board has approved this uh, by unanimous vote, we are asking that City Council also approve this resolution. Council, any discussion? Oh, wait, you might need an amount. The value of the qualified expenses ICA has been approved for financial assistance is for $4,405,417.18. Give or take. Yeah. Pretty exact. 18 cents. Council, any discussion? If you go down to page 17 and 17, you will have a uh, exhibit, exhibit B is qualified expenditures. Can, can they speak on this? Somebody on this? Yes. Yeah. Um, we do have ICA in the uh, room. Who else do we have? Uh, Who is it? Oh, come on up. We finally get the victim that we can interrogate. Come on up. <laughs> Go. No, come, come, come on, come on. Yet. Just state your name for the record, yeah, I got and then uh, you. you've got uh, three minutes. All right. Uh, my name is Ronald Haynes. Um, I'm having trouble making sense of how y'all have come to the conclusion that moving Bass Pro seven miles closer to Odessa is worth $11.5 million of taxpayer money. Uh, honestly, it's seven miles. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Um, Let's first look at the sales tax. 20 years, no taxes. You literally have Midland's competing offer and you decided to juice it by more than $2.3 million. Was it a bidding war gone wrong? I'm Why sorry. does that make sense? But what was that last question? That you had, uh, that your tax incentive packages were $2.3 million more than the so, Midland's. So was. what's the incentive package that you're proposing? That was how much? 100% uh, sales taxes for 20 years that you. Uh, or that 100 being proposed. sales tax rebate is that what you're saying yes for yeah. how many years as uh, it was 20 years okay is what's on the docket and it's capped at seven million dollars and then there's what we're talking about right now is another four and a half million dollars of infrastructure incentives sure 
So just to be clear, the ODC incentive is not to, uh, for any particular project. This is infrastructure to, to build out a full 150 acre tract of land. It'll be commercial, industrial, uh, warehousing, it's gonna have retail, it's gonna have housing. This is to develop that whole area. So just to, yeah, yeah, to make sure great. this is not. Yeah, no, perfect, I'd love to speak to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, <clears throat> or is there any other questions? I apologize. No, go ahead. Yeah, I can keep going, okay. Mr. Mayor. Yep, sorry. The, uh, this should be covered under line item 18, not 17. I'll stick with okay. 17. I'll come back for 18 okay. if you want. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's talk about the $4.5 million infrastructure incentive. The only thing this is paying for is nearly a w one mile long road that connects the Bass Pro site um, to Yukon Boulevard. It doesn't go any further than the Bass Pro site, so sort of to speak to that, um, it doesn't go back into the 150 acres at all. It just stays on the frontage road. Um, my question is, is why would the city agree to pay for this? Is the frontage road that literally runs parallel to this road that connects to Yukon, is, that, is this new road going to be a city road? Um, and then there's a section in the budget to reroute the existing drainage easement that directly goes under the Bass Pro property, which you can clearly see. It just wraps it around the Bass Pro property and then ends. It doesn't go back into the 150 acres. There's nothing about the back 150 acres. Uh, unless you want to say something else. Yes, That's yeah. Free. yeah. <clears throat> so to, to clarify, the this total amount is to, to bring drainage. It doesn't just stop there. It actually ties into an existing drainage that's going to yeah, pull the water you're, even you're gonna, further you're south. Spend, let let, 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 yeah, let yeah, them finish and you can, re, you, so, you can yeah, this is Again, this is to develop not only what you see here, but you've got 150 acres that comes here, and there's an additional 1,500 acres that wraps around oh. that this drainage is gonna benefit. The road that you're seeing here is gonna basically loop in uh, coming off of uh, Yukon Road. So you're creating a loop that's gonna actually help bring traffic from Midland into this entire development. And it's going to, and then also you got Mission Boulevard that's coming up in, on the backside that's going to end up being developed further okay. down the road that's going to tie back in uh, sure. back towards north. So this is this is part of a much bigger project that's coming the, that helped to deliver this and to develop this entire fifteen hundred acres back on the backside. Yeah, so. so you would have access back here to the man camp stuff. Right. Yeah, you know, right. there's going to be well, so that, no reason no. to build. There's this additional way. industrial. There's going to be industrial man manufacturing. Area, so sorry. yes, yeah, this is just part of that loop that's going to be. Uh, helping with uh, uh, transportation uh, with uh, with traffic flow. Okay. This is a block set. This oh is no! The first I, piece I, yeah, 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 yeah. I see that. Um, okay. So let me take one at a time. Speaking of the drainage, um, so what you're doing is the drainage goes through the middle of the site, right? Currently. Yeah. Right where Bass Pro goes, and so the expense is limited to the back of. What's that site? What's that road you're calling? Well, this is helping because you've also got a drainage problem north of 191, sure. and this and what we're doing is also going to help alleviate part of that drainage problem. Well, it's not. You're going to take it. It's not alleviating it. You're going to put a box culvert here, and you're going to instead of letting it free flow or sheet flow, excuse me, then you're going to you're going to control it here, and then you're going to let it go back to sheet flowing. Yeah, that's what this. But it's going to come this more this direction does. than 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 here. But okay. It's, so okay. Anyway, go ahead. You see it here? Or, does that make sense? Ronald Haynes. Somewhat. I'm not an engineer, so no. Okay. Are you an engineer? engineer? Uh, not by trade, no. Okay. Go ahead and continue. You yep. got your th uh, if you continue like, your three minutes. Here as well, I'm sure okay, we can. Awesome. Anyway, go, go right ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, this agreement states that four and a half million is used for mixed use development. Why would we want Bass Pro adjacent to a workforce housing, manufacturing, storage, distribution, and recycling facilities? That's what this agreement explicitly allows. This is not what taxpayer dollars want to be going towards. Okay. Uh, much less are they the kind of uses that would allow for the city of Odessa to recoup their four and a half million dollar investment because it actually doesn't touch any of that. We could debate it. I get it. Um, and I'll come back up to talk about an eleven point five million dollar total incentive package in here in a minute. Um, after all, it's not like Bass Pro is going to be paying anything for two decades per 19. Uh, not to mention, I bet everyone would be super excited to bring their kids to Bass Pro and be driving by the local man camps and the recycling yards along the way. Uh, f furthermore, this infrastructure pack package does nothing to require that anything get built other than the infrastructure. It doesn't require that man camps get built. It doesn't require that any industrial get built. It doesn't require that Bass Pro gets built. Um, all it requires is that a road gets constructed. It could dead end to nothing. Okay. Um, so I'll leave the rest to 
do okay. about that, and then I'll talk about 19. So I'll add a little to what he said. First of all, thank you very much for, for the question. I think you bring up some valid points. Um, one, one thing you're leaving out is ad valorem taxes. We're going to have ad valorem taxes on a $35.5 million facility in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So you've got that. You've got a creation of 100 plus jobs just with Bass Pro. Again, this has nothing to do with this, but just to contradict part of what you're saying, you're going to create 100 plus jobs there. Um, you're, we're, you're developing out 150 acres, so you're saying it's going to be adjacent to uh, industrial manufacturing, all of that. Well, I don't consider a 150 acre plot necessarily adjacent. So you've got a lot of future development here. I, I get a lot of what you're saying, but I think is, as the development corporation, the investment that we're making on the front side, the return on the back side is going to far outpace this $4.4 .4 million, $4.5 million you have $2 investment. $2 million dollars for a road that runs parallel to the front of your road. That's Actually, I don't think it's a $2 million road. The vast majority of this was for drainage. That's not for a let, let, go, let, let, go ahead and let him finish so, his point. Uh, is there anything else you want to add? Because you do have three minutes. No, I'm back. You did? All right. Appreciate it. Good. Thank uh, you very much for the question. I'll, I'll be happy to even get with you after and try to answer some more of those if you'd like. <clears throat> so there's some numbers here that, uh, that uh, uh, yeah, I'm just not going to debate. We will wind up putting the pa incentive package out for the public for review. Uh, you guys want to make any statements? You want to come up here and talk? You want to add anything to it? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wise decision. Sure. Council, do we have any discussion? Anything that you want to answer, uh, Mr. Ronald? Anybody? Just for the record, who uh, who contacted who? Did we did, did the city of Odessa ever contact Bass Pro Shops while they were in uh, in uh, I guess negotiations with Midland? Well, there, there was a statement about why is the city of Odessa bringing uh, Bass Pro Shops? We don't. We're not in control of any corporations exactly. or any stores. The city of Odessa is not in the business of opening banks. And I've said this countless of times. The city of Odessa is not in the private sector. We do not invest in uh, supermarkets, banks, uh, coffee shops, car washes, chicken places, the three C's. We don't own Bass Pro Shop. We did not go out and incentivize and, and say, hey, we're going to go pull. These corporations go out and they speak to communities, and they look at the best be deal and the investment. Uh, this was the case here. Um, I'm not going to get into what happened in Midland or, or, or things of that nature, but um, corporation looked into various areas, not just this area, and made it a sound business decision. Um, it was very painstaking, especially the uh, discussions with ODC. This gentleman asked a lot of hard questions, uh, and I would just tell you that my experience with Mr. Crow, while he's been on the ODC as president, uh, would not make an investment if the return on investment was a hundredfold. Uh, you may not believe it, and I'm not trying to convince you of it. You've got your facts, you've got your numbers, but what you're seeing, and when you're talking about 150 acres, is you're seeing one hundredth of the development that's going to be coming. Uh, we, but we preview to be able to see some things that are all preliminary, and uh, and so and nothing is exact, nothing is guaranteed other than death and taxes. But one of the things is, is that Mr. Crow's right, 4.4 is an investment in activating uh, the very first 150 acres that will then preclude to more and more. What you fail to say is that Harmony Home has announced an expansion of the junior high and the high school that's adjutant right behind Synergy. That that road will lead to another road, that that road will lead to Henley, that will, road, that will lead to that high school. And we have to be able to complete that for the circulation. Uh, so it doesn't dead end to nothing. The, the drainage facility is a textile facility, and we've had already been looking at that for quite some time when we all came into office. One of the things that you failed to see, and that has been explained because we haven't gone out, is that the, the previous administrations and planning and lack of planning, everything to the north, there are additional 500 acres, and they're already development that they were never precluded to create drainage issues, to be able to divert those, those waters into a retention pond. So they simply just allow it to flow across the highway and have caused drainage issues to this particular area that was undevelopable if it's left the way it is. The city of Odessa, in part, is to blame for that because it did not enforce on these developers to the north to be able to address that issue. So 
if we're talking about whatever your numbers are, our people are not failing to address the $36 million that was addressed for 1.7 uh, miles of road to be able to address those issues that developer failed to do and that's not paid a pro rata. And it is costing taxpayers $36 million that was a part of a $90 million bond that we're going to be paying on debt for 20 years simply because people in past administrations didn't do their job. These are things that we had to rectify. We have a responsibility to help our developers when they have this type of investment they've had since the 80s to be able to activate that we have to right the wrongs. And, and, and I believe when we saw the model and the return on investment, this is a way to be able to make a, a small investment for a huge return. What you're seeing right now, and we're talking about 150 acres, is one hundredth of the properties that's coming in. And I, I understand, you know, I'm, I'm hearing man camps, I'm hearing things of that nature. And so um, don't believe that that's, 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 that's the, uh, the direction that, we're, that, that Mr. Bush is going to. The investment is into properties and development that uh, ICA has been really working into. We really took a lot of care and time uh, into this. I will frankly, when this, this was brought up to me, and I sat in the first meeting, I was a huge skeptic. And I think that Kelly knows that. And I was a skeptic through the whole thing. And uh, we, 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 we instructed our staff to work along with the developers and to bring us into the know when it was time for the city to step in, then the ODC. It was a step-by-step -step meticulous uh, process. No one took it lightly. And we definitely just didn't sit there and think, we're going to just uh, abandon our responsibilities to uh, this community and our constituents because we all live here, we all pay taxes. And in saying that, um, I believe that we came with a very uh, conservative uh, investment that will pay for years to come. And, uh, and so the thing is, is that I, there, there's, there's things right now that we have NDAs in place that we cannot speak about, so this is the extent of it. Uh, these are separate. Uh, Projects. The 4.4 that uh, ODC is committing is to a local developer, a uh, person has owned this land and has made huge investments into the city, throughout the city for decades, and uh, we are investing in our own. Now, this corporation is going out and looking for the, uh, to be able to sell pad sites and things of that nature, and that's what they do. That's not what the city does, and we're not in that business. And so uh, this has been painstaking, and we do not take it lightly. Um, I don't think we're building a road to nowhere. Um, no, I didn't say you were. I just said that. It's coming to a dead end. It's not so coming to anything. And, and, and I get it. I understand. You know, there, this project is not coming out with criticism. And it's okay. I mean, everybody's afforded, you know, their opinion. I've heard countless of things about it. And, it, and, and we understand. Um, but the entire plan hasn't been laid out. This has just been, it's been baby steps. And so... Um, we just ask people for patience as we start laying that out. Today is the first step that we've actually made it uh, as public as we can. We still There's still things that uh, still need to fall in place, and we're working towards that. And you, you'll see the uh, in due time as we wind up being uh, supporters. We're just in the back seat. We have the LCA that will be making those, uh, those announcements later on as uh, things come to fruition, but we have to give them time to be able to work. And so, but we do have to rectify some serious uh, drainage issues that if you go back, what year did we have all that uh, flooding that we had in uh, south of that, all that down Fadre that wind up damming on uh, business 20? And uh, we wind up ruining several businesses and vehicles down there and neighborhoods that, that and, and that flooding was both in the city of, of Odessa and Midland County. And we still need test out to rectify that. And that's the, because business 20 it's a dam, and, uh, th and those drainage issues we're, we're, we've got to address, and we've been doing it without the help of Millen County. And so, um, and, and, but it's just the development was built without any proper drainage, and there was no oversight. And today we've had to deal with uh, some of those topics on, on our agenda, even with the city of Odessa. So um, we get it, we hear you, and so be gladly to meet with you. Uh, if you call my office and go over your numbers, that way we can you, you can see 
what we're doing here. And we'd be gladly to have that. We've got your uh, contact. And we, we, we mind leaving the contact. Send an email, give you a call. All right? Guys, do we have any other discussion on this item? No. All right. So we have, I got to go back to my place. Mr. Corp, you can also know yes, sir. You did a great job. Thank you for explaining that. Um, <laughs> item 18. No, we need a motion. We need, we need, we need to make a motion. motion and vote. I'm sorry. I was trying to find myself. Item 17. I knew we had a vote. I just I, I canceled it out. So uh, we need a, a motion for approval, amend or deny so be for uh, ICA Development LLC for the for the prize for the amount of four point four uh, million five thousand four hundred seventeen dollars and eighteen cents. I have a motion by Council Member Swanner. Do I have a second? Me. Council Member uh, Haney, all in favor indicating by saying aye. 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 All those opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. We're going to move on to item 18 Consider Economic Development Performance Program Grant Agreement with uh, Bass Pro Outdoor World LLC for the development of approximately 14,455 acre property located south of State 191. Mr. Bernard. Yes, sir. Mayor and Council, mm -hmm. um, I'm here to present and to for y'all to consider um, a very important project. And um, to consider an economic development performance and program grant agreement with Bass Pro Outdoor LLC for the development of approximately 14. 455 acres of property located south of State Highway 191, east of Mission Boulevard in the city of Odessa, Midland County, Texas. The proposed economic development performance and program grant, better known as a 380 agreement, with Bass Pro Outdoor World LLC will promote high quality development and will also aid in the ongoing improvement of the quality of life for the citizens of Odessa. Bass Pro Outdoor World LLC will invest the minimum of $35.5 million in the construction of a 100,000 square foot destination retail facility that will offer a wide array of outdoor related merchandise, equipment and gear and will generate a minimum of a 100 full time equivalent or FTE jobs. The amount of the reimbursement grant program is not to exceed 7 million which will be paid through project generated sales tax and will be for a term of 20 years. Additionally, as a major retail attraction, Bass Pro Shops attracts customers from out of town as well as other unique retail restaurant and entertainment operations to lo locate them near, which will generate additional taxes and job. So we are asking for 100% of the 1% of the sales tax for the duration of 20 years or 7 million, whichever comes first. Kids, do we have any questions? How does the uh, taxation work when we have a business such as this in the city of Odessa, but the property also has a Midland County? Is there, is there taxation that Midland County gets out of it? Property yes. tax. Property tax. Ad valorem. Ad valorem. Okay. I'm learning. Okay. So the city of Odessa is in Hector County and Midland County. And in this particular site, it's all in Midland County. So they will be, what's their, what's their percentage? Uh, half a percent in their property tax? I, 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 don't, I don't recall. They have a sales tax. Midland County has a sales tax, I think, of uh, 0.50. I'm not, I, I, I think that's what I'd heard. But in this case, they'd be receiving the Avalorum tax. Yeah. And then the, the city, the city, you're it's asking sure. for 100% for 20 years, capping at 7%. Capping it at 7%. You want to be able to explain what that cap is at 7% because nobody understands what 7 that is. 7 or 7 million. 7, 7 million. million. 7 million. 7 million. So at right. 7 million, um, so we anticipate uh, $32.5 million. Annual. In, it's annual. In and sales. that comes from? The sales. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but, and, and, but the, that, those numbers came in from the corporation. That yes, came in from yes. the corporation. So What they project, uh, the projections. So the, our 1%, we're estimating that would generate about 6.5 million. 
mm-hmm. and uh, over the 20 year. And uh, so we capped it at seven, which they could still capture some of it through uh, construction cost if it's through the city. Um, so we've kind of adjusted for that. So it just capped it at seven. It's, it's just very simple. And, and Mayor, and uh, Mr. Bernal, correct me if I'm wrong, but chances are this will probably six, seven years at the most, and the seven million will be, it'll be capped. Yes. It won't go 20 years. It, we hope it doesn't. Well, the thing is, is that the reason why we're putting in the cap is we anticipate with the sales being annually at 30 to 32 million yeah. that, that we will it won't take the 20 years to recapture. Correct. And then we will be start generating the sales tax. Right. So um, we have, I think, two previous uh, agreements at half of that. Yes. And, but the cap is at five, if I'm correct. Did we, did we cap it at five? What was the cap? We have, we have a Good. few agreements. Okay. Good. Give us those agreements. So... We have um, Parks Legato, who has had a 25 million investment, and the amount of that grant was $7,942,287. Um, the Brownstone Center, which was only a $20 million investment, and their grant was for $5,671,000. Um, the Synergy Entertainment Center, which was uh, a $23 million investment, uh, was uh, the amount of that grant was $2,566,069. Torchy's Taco, which is right downtown, um, mm-hmm. their investment we expected about $1.7 to $2 million, and um, we don't, I don't see the cap on that. The amount of the grant was 343750 mm-hmm. um, So the 418 North Grant, the restaurant and lounge, which was just, which was 400000 um, maybe at 81500 The Shiloh Center, the same jobs created was 100 and the investment was 20 20 million, and we invested <coughs> 7 million point one, seven million one hundred seventeen thousand three hundred sixty-two dollars This is over in the course of what, how many years now? Yes, and last but not least, Chimney Rock. Yeah, which one? Chimney, Chimney Rock. Chimney Rock. Chimney Rock. Uh, which was, the amount of the grant was 5 million, 100,000, and the re- required investment was 20 million. So um, we're asking Bass Pro Shop to invest at least 35.5 million and create 100 FT jobs. All right. Midland, uh, Midland, Midland County sales tax rate is 0.5. What is it? 0.5. 0.5. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was. I knew it was that close. That's for Midland County. Do we have any other questions? <coughs> no, pretty good. Any other questions? I was going to ask if you wanted to speak on item two. Come on. Yeah, three minutes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, the Odessa, Odessa tax rate is one point two five, right? Sales tax in the in in the county, but this is in Midland County. No, Odessa sales tax. In the county, it's uh, it's set, it's eight point two five. I know, but what's your cut of it? The state takes six. The sales tax? Yeah. It's a quarter cent. Quarter of point a two s- five. Point two point two five. Right. Quarter cent. I think it's got to be more than that. If you did thirty two million at point two five, it would be like fifty years before you get to twenty okay. or seven million. You're all right. But okay, that's fine. Well, it kind of matters. Uh, you, you'd refer to something that said it was going to take like six years to reimburse, and I think it's going to take like all of 17 or so. Okay. Um, but I, regardless, I guess my point is, is um, you know, it kind of leads back to moving 
you know, like going and going and, and getting a new tenant to come to a market is something good for the residents, right? Like, you know, you get a great Wolf Lodge, you know, that's what incentive dollars go towards. Um, getting something that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get. But what seems odd to me in this instance is that you're, you're, what all you're doing is moving a tenant seven miles closer to you, but giving up $7 million to do it. And it could be viewed as more than that, but here nor there. Um, Sir, can I make a question? Sure. I please. mean, I make a statement. We didn't move the tenant. The no, tenant no, 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 chose no, no. I'm to saying, move I'm saying to our location. Incentivize the tenant. Okay. Incentivize. I just wanted to make oh, that yeah, clear. Yeah, that's totally fair. Totally fair. Yeah, incentivize the tenant um, to, you know, or to match, match Midlands or however you want to look at it. Um, it feels like a bidding war. And, you know, what I'm wondering is, are the Odessa taxpayers winning in the bidding war um, because they get a Bass Pro regardless. They get a Bass Pro for free if you don't do anything. And so you're using the taxpayer dollars not to like bring Bass Pro to the Permian. You're, you're, you're using tax city dollars or city sales tax dollars to move them seven miles. That's all I'm saying. Again, they chose, you, I know, they no, no, chose you're, to you're, be you're, you're incentivizing, with our you're, you're creating an incentive that isn't needed for, ba for an Odessa resident, resident to shop at a Bass Pro okay. at two miles or excuse me, seven miles away. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor, I believe Mr. Crow has a... I thought you had left. You were hiding over there behind Guppy. Yes, yeah, so just to kind of touch on, on what Mr. Haynes said, uh, I did take a quick look, and I pulled up just the Chimney Rock retail. Mm -hmm. So that total facility is currently valued at $15.7 mm -hmm. and just the city of Odessa alone's ad valorem tax for this year is $76,000. So that's on a $15 million investment in just the city's piece. And that's not taking into the hospital district, Odessa College, or any other, any other yeah. entities. So if you just look at this. So no, that's on a $15 million investment. So yeah, so, but that's, again, this is, so yeah. So, so just take that as one piece on the ad valorem taxes. Then take a look at what do you think is going to be building around that Bass Pro? And what do you think that it's going to be a, a, attaching to ad valorem taxes to that in addition? Just, just take the 150 acres, not the 1,500 acres that's being developed behind it, but just the 150 acres that that, that type of anchor is going to bring in. Do you think it will be higher value items or, or lower value? Right. And so do you think that's going to benefit some of the property that, I mean, because you're right there on the line into Ector County to where the hospital district, school board, you know, all of those will benefit as well. So, I, so again, it's just part of, this is kind of part of the investment that I was trying to get you to. So, so we don't as of yet, again, because we've got several NDAs that are coming in behind it. So the, the estimate of total property build out just in that 150 acres, I'm sure will be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So part of that will also be in Ector County. So the, to make a long story short, again, the, the $4.4 million investment just the ODC is doing is to develop out that, that entire area. And when you look at the future value of ad valorem taxes and then the sales taxes that the city of Odessa will get on top of that, this will be a drop in the bucket. So and thank let you. Let me just add to this too. What, if somebody can answer me this question, I mean, it's a pretty easy question. What is the current amount that the city of Odessa is receiving the sales tax on that property as it is right now, and, and has been for the past uh, 20 years? Zero. Zero. What's the amount that we're going to receive when this is when this is built? It's going to it's it's going to be all, all all the city sales tax is going to be collected by the city. After that 20 years is up, or when that seven million dollar threshold is met, then we get all, then we get then we get it all back. So it's, it looks like we're not seeing the forest because of the trees. You know, we have to look, and that's, and that's what's wrong with this. We have to see the, the big picture. We can't just be so myopic in saying that, man, we're missing out on this right here, right off the bat, because we're offering these, in, these incentives. You know, we're, we're, we're having to think for the future, think, think for the future and seeing what, what's this going to do for the city of Odessa. It's going to make that area explode. And that's what Mr. Crow is trying to um, explain is this what we're developing out here in this 4.4 million isn't just for the Bass Pro Shop. We're not thinking small. That would be thinking small if that's all this is going to. This is going to the 150 acres out there that's going to spur economic growth in that area 
plus the additional 1,500 acres that's going to be growing out there also. So to think in that mindset that um, we're not going to be receiving anything because we're giving these, we're giving some incentives. We're not receiving nothing right now anyway, so we're not losing out. But we are going to be gaining in the next 20 years or, or whenever that threshold is met. So that's, that's a big word, more myopic, man. That's, that takes education, <laughs> huh? They don't teach that at they don't teach, State. They don't teach that at UT. <laughs> The, the other I thing, also, yes. the other thing too is, is that by not thinking of the future and fixing stuff right now, we just forked out thirty-six million dollars for a, a road that should have been done ten years ago when it first started getting developed. If we're not thinking ahead, we're going to be behind again and again and again. That thirty-six million dollars is haunting us because we have other stuff we could have spent that money on. Yes. And I also would like to add um, to the comments that were up here that um, there wasn't a bidding war. There wasn't anything of the sort, not one bit. This is a very worthwhile project, and we're proud to be working with um, ICA, a very valued member of the community, um, and for the work of the mayor and the council and Mr. Beckmeyer, the leadership that you've provided. This is a very worthwhile project. And of course, um, there will be some people with different views. It's okay. Which is okay. But just to reiterate and add to the comments that there was not a bidding war. Correct. This is not what this, this was. Correct. Council, any other further discussion? No, sir. If not, I'll entertain a motion for item 18 as presented for approval. I so um, move. I have a motion by Council Member Vasquez for item 18 <coughs> to approve as proposed. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Council Member Haney. All in favor indicating by saying aye. 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 All opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passed unanimously. We're going to move on to miscellaneous. And thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to miscellaneous uh, item 19. Uh, Appointment of boards. Ms. Aguilar. For the Midland Odessa Urban Transit District, appoint Jonathan Herschel Russell. Council received the application. And there were two applications for the Traffic Advisory Committee. Mayor, that's uh, one of your appointments, if you're willing to. Uh, for which one? Yeah, we have to committee. replace Brady Ross. Correct. Have the applicants been contacted? Uh, yes, I sent you those this two uh, applications. One was Eric Gomez, and the other one was James, who goes by Jim Whitaker. Jill Whitaker. Anybody yeah. know? Jim Whitaker. Jim Whitaker. Mm -hmm. What's that sound from? Mm -hmm. I've heard that name also. And both said they've been willing to serve. Yes. Who put in their application first? Both first. Um, I think it was Mr. Whitaker. I'll go. I'll go with that tiebreaker, yeah, Mr. Whitaker. Whitaker sent his first. Jim Whitaker. Yes. And those are the only two. Items. Okay, so we have uh, item D and item G. So we'll take one of uh, Jonathan Herschel uh, Russell for Midland Odessa Urban Transit. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. I have a motion by Council Member Swan, second by Council Member Mutt. All in favor of indicating by saying aye. 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 All opposed indicating by saying nay. Uh, item G, Traffic Advisory, Jim Whitaker to replace Brady Ross on the Traffic Advisory Committee. I have a motion. So, so moved. I have a motion by Council Member Mutt. Second. second by Council Member Vasquez. All in favor indicating by saying aye. 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 All opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passed unanimously. That's it. Yes, sir. Seeing that there is no more uh, business before the city council, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn by council member. So moved. Swanner, second by council member. Second. Vasquez, all in favor, indicating by saying aye. 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 All opposed.